Yeah, it was good. We're talking CEO today. We're talking stories from CEO, what happened at this event, how everything looked, big chilling, Buffalo Scar pop off analysis. That's, I should probably watch that because the thing is that I watched the clip on my phone, but I didn't end up uh, watching like the whole entire pop off because it was so long and Daytona Beach is such a horrible place that I didn't have enough service to load the entire video. I can't believe how bad that place is. You have to take, like, there's so many things to take into consideration when ranking how bad of a place it is. It's really hard to wrap my head around it because when I, it's like a Billy Mays infomercial because every time I think I've hit the last part about Daytona Beach that suck, it's like, but wait, there's more. And I find out another thing about this place that's so fucking horrible. So you start, right, with Daytona Beach. Just a nice bit of racism to start things off. There's Confederate flags up and down the beach sign. There's all these crazy racist motherfuckers who are super rude to everybody. If you didn't see Justin tweet about it, he tweeted about how he didn't... He had, like, an interaction that was really bad. Everybody had interactions that sucked last year, too. It was, like, crazy. So you start off with a nice bit of racism, right? You know, that's, that's quite the start to the weekend. After that, you pair in the fact that Daytona Beach is far as fuck from Orlando, which is where everybody's going to fly in. So you have to take shuttles or Ubers to and from. And the Daytona Beach airport is a fucking fortune to fly into comparatively. So even if someone else is paying for your flight, they're like, well, what the fuck, man? That shit's far. You got to take an Uber to and from it to save money. And Orlando airport is horrible. Then you take into consideration the food. And the thing is, people recommend it to me. They're like, look, we've got these food places. You got to hit these food places. They're going to be mad good. I tried some places on this list. I had some food that was like staff food. I had some food that was like, I never ate like shitty convention food. I always tried to go. I didn't go to like Burger King and McDonald's and shit. I always tried to go to like a restaurant. Every single meal I had in this place, and I'm not exaggerating, every single meal immediately wanted to evacuate my body. The fat, like, it was like me trying to leave Florida. Like, it couldn't stay there any longer. It was like, we got to get the fuck out of this guy's body. And I'm happy for that because it means that I didn't take any Daytona home with me. It just got evacuated and left behind in fucking Daytona Beach. But, man, it destroyed my body. And the thing is, my body is very durable. I fly everywhere. Bro, I went to Chile and I had seafood in Chile and my body is fine. I go to, like... You know, I go all over the world and I eat seafood and fucking shit that normally people are like, you shouldn't do that when you travel. Fine. Daytona Beach, couldn't couldn't handle it. My body was like, get this shit out of your system. This is poison. Don't don't insert this. The white blood cells were attacking the food from Daytona Beach. They were like, this is a disease in your body. We got to get this out of here. Then you add in this fucking ridiculous travel day that I had back home where my flight, oh my God. I took the two hour bus from the venue to the airport, right? That already is long enough, as long as Don Cafe's 33 month subscription. Wow, thanks very much. I, I get on the bus and it takes two hours to get to the airport. I get to the airport, it's fucking mad early in the morning, as early as Chris MR518 with the 10 months. Thanks very much. Two hours later, I'll arrive at Orlando Airport, go through security. It's now at this point about 10.30 in the morning, and my flight's at noon. I board in like an hour. So I'm like, okay, we're going to board in like an hour. No problem. Go over there. We get on the plane. Get on the plane. It's a straight shot. I'm going to be back in Los Angeles home by 2 p.m. So I get on there. I'm ready to go. I fall asleep on the plane. And then I wake up. My mouth is dry. My face is hot. I feel warm. And I'm like very confused about what's happening. We're not off the air. They, they get on the thing and they're like, hey, there's been an electrical situation. We tried to power up the plane and then we tried to flip another switch on something. It like shorted. So the APU on this plane is not working. Uh, unfortunately, sorry about that. So there's no air conditioning right now. So yeah, the plane within minutes was like incredibly hot. So hot that I had to like take my jacket off. I'm like sweating and shit. I was like, I need to get off this plane. So I get, we deplane, we get off. And then they're like, okay, we're going to try to fix this. We got delayed for two hours while they tried to fix this plane. Two and a half hours while they're trying to fix this plane. And by the time they finish that, it's, you know, it's like 2.30. We were supposed to leave forever ago. They get on the intercom. They're like, your flight's canceled. 
So obviously it's like, well, shit, everybody in line is trying to line up and yell at them and complain about their vouchers. The first thing I did, I was open up my phone. I was like, I need a new flight. So while these motherfuckers are all trying to complain at the death, I'm like on my phone, like, all right, let me get a new flight out of this bitch immediately. I know the strats. I'm not going to fuck around. Uh, I get on the thing. I have a new flight. It's from, it's like 5 p.m. now is the new flight I'm going to have instead of noon. And it's from Orlando to Chicago, Chicago to LAX. You know, we got an hour or two to kill now until my next flight. So I've been there for five hours. I'm, t I'm tired. I didn't sleep a lot. I had to get up at like 7 a.m. to go to the airport. I'm sitting there waiting. And then I see a notification on my phone that my new flight's delayed. So I check the status. And it's like, your, your flight to Chicago will now land at 8 p.m. Your flight out of Chicago to LAX is 8.10. I was like, I can't make that. What do you mean? I can't make that. The flight's already going to be like done boarding by the time I hit the ground. So I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? So I call, I get on the phone and call them. And I'm like, hey, I have this flight. I'm supposed to board in like 30 minutes or something. It just got delayed. I'm like, I'm supposed to board this in like 30 minutes. Now it's going to be an hour. If I get on this flight, I'm not going to make it home tonight, right? And they're like, yeah, if you get on that flight, you're going to be stranded in Chicago. You won't make it home. There's no way. So they put me on another flight. Now, instead of going from orlando to chicago to la the new flight is from orlando to phoenix to long beach and i'm like oh my god they're like yeah we got you on this new flight i'm sorry we're gonna see your baggage is it's it's too late for your baggage to be moved it's like 20 minutes before boarding your bag is gonna be sent somewhere else but we can get you home tonight and i was like get me out of this fucking place i don't want to be here any longer I need to get the fuck out of Florida. This shit is, I'm gonna die here if I don't leave tonight. I knew it. I was like, I gotta get out of here. They sent me to Phoenix. James, David, and I all end up getting moved to the to the Phoenix flight. Dude, it was. It was so crazy. It was a 15 hour travel day. My travel day was probably almost as long as yours somehow. It was insane. We show up in Phoenix. We arrive in Phoenix. We're like, fucking like, thank God we made it to Phoenix. And now my next flight is in like an hour and I get to go home. I'm like, well, my bags are gonna be missing, but at least I get to make it home step off the plane we're walking towards the terminal as we're walking there's a guy running he's trying to catch his flight and it's hot it's we're in phoenix it's 107 degrees outside it's super hot mid run this dude collapses from like i i would guess heat exhaustion or some you know something affecting him heat or something like that and hits the pavement face planted and like broke his nose and he's unconscious so now there's a guy like bleeding out. Like David jumps over the fucking thing that we're on. We have to like run around. We're like trying to like call fucking paramedics and everything to help this guy out. We're like, Jesus Christ, I hope this guy's okay. He had to get CPR. Like it was like a, a whole big humongous fucking thing. And we're like, dude, is this guy going to be okay? Eventually he came to, it turns out he's okay. I, I, I would assume his, his nose is broken or something, but it's probably the heat that got to him and all this shit, right? So we're like, fucking, what is even going on? This travel day is getting crazier and crazier. This poor guy, like, face planted. Like, it, it, and we're the witnesses, obviously. It's like, I hope this guy's okay. Like, all this shit, crazy shit's happening. Make it to the gate. James and David leave. I'm looking at my phone for my flight. Look at the phone. You've been delayed 45 minutes to get home. And at this point, I just, I, I'm like, there must have been some kind of hex placed on me when i left from when i tried to leave from daytona this morning there must have been a hex placed on me there's no other way to describe the series of events that happened in this travel day as a, it was a hex of some kind i don't know what kind of magic or what kind of magic user cast this shit on me but i was like this is fucked up this is a crazy ass day you know my first flight in the day was supposed to land at 2 p.m back home now it's nine it went from 9 30 to 10 30 to 11 and i'm like oh my god and it got undelayed back to 10 30. so i'm like you know what all right whatever happens we're gonna make it just like i'm gonna make it on over to thank launch fgc for hitting me with the twitch prime for seven months thanks very much all right so i get on the flight i make it home I land. I have my roommate pick me up because I'm super close to what's it called? I'm at Long Beach Airport. I'm not at LAX. It's much closer. So my roommate scoops me up. We go home. I call them. I'm like, hey, what's the deal with my bags and shit? They're like, yeah, your bags got sent to fucking Chicago and now they're being sent to LA and shit. Uh, you got to fill out a ticket and your bags will show up. My bag, actually, you can see it in the corner. 
my bag's over there. It showed up yesterday, but because I didn't get home until like 11 or 12, yesterday I didn't stream. I had like two or three phone calls and and um, uh, conference calls I had to get on about upcoming events and stuff. And I was like, you know, I don't have time to stream. My bag's supposed to show up in the middle of the day, so I got I to gotta pick that thing up when it's supposed to show up. So I was like, whatever. This travel day, this Daytona hex placed on me, I can't get around it. So needless to say, if CEO is in Daytona next year, I'm fucking, I'm going to bring some, I don't know what I'm going to bring. I'm going to, I have to look up a fucking witch doctor to help me prevent some kind of hex that's been placed on me. I need Eris to counter hex. That's what I need. I need him to place an Armenian blessing on me, not an Armenian hex. I need an Armenian blessing to counterbalance it. Why did David and James drive home? So they got sent to a different airport than me. The problem with them is that they originally flew out of LAX. So like David is parked at LAX. But then they flew him to Burbank because they couldn't get him a flight home to LAX. So now he's at Burbank Airport. So they have to drive from Burbank Airport to LA Airport, pick up the car there, then take the car back to James's house. So even them, they made it home, but like in some crazy ass fucking manner, right? Like it was like they made it back, but not in the correct airport and had to go back to the correct airport, which is a far, it's like not an easy drive to do because of all the traffic and everything. I need an Armenian blessing the next time I travel. I'll tell you what, I want to say 10 Hail Marys to fucking No Pants and the ATP Enterprise. The thing I realized about traveling from this entire ordeal is that despite the cancellations, delays, near death experience from some stranger that was ha that uh, happened in the Phoenix airport, all of that, I kept my cool with, ev I never got uh, angry or upset with anybody I interacted with. They were like, they'd be like, hey, sir, you're, you're canceled. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll try to get on another flight. They're like, sir, you know, this flight's now delayed. You're not going to make your layover. I was like, all right, is there any other flights available? What else can I do to make it? Send my bag somewhere else? Send that shit. It'll make it eventually. No matter where it was, I was like, oh, if I keep cool, it's all going to sort itself out. I'll make it back in one piece. And that was the important part. You got to, you know, harness your uh, inner peace to survive this shit. My luck stat is very high. So I think that although I had a lot of bad incidents happen on the way back, my theory is that it would have been worse if it was not for my luck stat counterbalancing the hex that was placed on me for this travel day my luck is super powerful in fact i got upgraded on the flights that got delayed <laughs> i got upgraded on them they're like yeah you're first class now sir and i was like you know what this is the luck stack kicking in to try to uh cheer me up for what's going on here